Disclaimer. Please note that the example provided is for demonstration purposes only. It is important to consider the policies and standard operating procedures of your employer, department, and supervisors before engaging in any situation, as each situation may differ and require different levels of response. Definitions Aided Person in need of medical attention Whether they be students, staff, visitors, or pedestrians, the person who is injured, sick, or otherwise needs medical assistance is known as the aided. Post 1 Officer, officer posted in the area designated with responding to security-related requests or emergencies. For the purposes of this presentation, the officer posted in the area where the aided is requesting assistance will be known as Post 1 Officer, this naming designation will differ per post. Base Communication hub with dispatcher receiving and relaying information. This is the command center where the dispatcher receives all calls and radio transmissions and sends those out to the relevant parties, such as the Post 1 officer. EMS Emergency Medical Services or Ambulance Persons with a higher level of medical training than the officer called for assistance. Mobile Officer Mobile patrol officer tasked with transportation of staff and assisting officers with tasks. An officer assigned a patrol vehicle for quick response to incidents, transportation, and aiding other officers. Supervisor Supervisory official tasked with overseeing and directing a response. The manager or supervising officer on duty. Introduction this presentation will serve as a demonstration of procedures as they would likely occur for a campus safety officer responding to a request for medical assistance from a student. Initial request. Student or witness in the vicinity of the student needing assistance calls the public safety office explaining that they need help. The base dispatcher asks for more information and the aided explains that she has fallen and hurt her ankle. The dispatcher takes her information and informs her that help is on the way. Notification. The base dispatcher notifies post one officer that medical assistance is required. The dispatcher informs post one officer of the location of the aided. Confirmation. Officer on post 1 acknowledges notification. Clear concise communication is extremely important, so the officer acknowledges receipt of the initial message and follow-ups. Officer asks for clarification on aided's condition. Clarification on the aided's condition is requested, so he is aware of the situation he is entering. Information. Base responds with slip and fall related ankle injury. Base informs the officer that there was a slip and fall with an ankle injury. Officer acknowledges transmission. Base has to take down all of the calls and over the air transmissions, so it's important that if a transmission is received it is acknowledged with a 10-4 or copy verbal response. Additional support. BASE sends a supervisor, EMS, and mobile officer. BASE dispatcher also transmits that a supervisor, mobile officer, and EMS are on the way. POST-1 officer is en route to the location. POST-1 officer acknowledges and informs that he is en route to the location of the aided. ARRIVAL POST-1 officer approaches the apartment door. Knocks and announces themselves as public safety. Knocking first is extremely important, as the dormitory or room is a private space, and the officer should endeavor not to surprise any occupants with his arrival. Requests permission for entry. If entry is granted verbally or by someone opening the door, then post one officer can enter the area. Entry. If no answer, but the door is unlocked, officers may enter while loudly announcing themselves.
The procedure for entering a location under these circumstances will vary depending on the factors present, as well as employer policy, but the door being unlocked and a request for aid originating from that location typically confers permission to enter. If no answer, but the door is locked, notify base of the status and await further instruction from the supervisor upon arrival. If there is no response upon knocking but the door is locked, forced entry is typically not authorized. The officer should notify base and await further instruction from supervisor upon arrival, which may include retrieving a spare dorm key and entering that way. Initial Assessment Aidit's roommate opens the door. In this example, the aidit's roommate opens the door. Post 1 officer asks where the person in need of assistance is and is led to the aided. Post 1 officer then asks for the location of the injured person. Condition Aided is wincing in pain and rubbing their ankle. Officer asks what happened, and aided explains that they slipped and sprained their ankle. Post 1 officer is directed to the area where the student is rubbing her ankle and wincing in pain. After introducing himself as campus safety and asking what happened, the officer is told she slipped in the hallway and sprained her ankle. First aid. Officer asks permission to help and it's granted. It's important that since the person is conscious, they are asked if it's okay for the officer to administer first aid and it is granted. Officer gets a dry rag and a Ziploc bag with ice in it. Places rag with ice bag wrapped in it over the injured area, and tells Aided to hold it there. From here, using basic first aid training the officer follows the steps for helping alleviate pain and swelling to the injured and sprained area. Information Gathering Officer records names of the witness, and Aided as well as relevant identification numbers. Supervisor arrives to assess the situation and direct as necessary. Other responders such as resident assistants may arrive, and it's important the officers take their information for their report. Once basic aid is administered it's important that the responding officer take the names of all parties, including noting times of his arrival, and any assisting officers or officials, for example, resident assistants. Handover EMS arrives Mobile officer transmits that they are on site and will escort EMS to location of aided. EMS conducts medical assessment. Officers await outside and notify dispatch assessment is being conducted. Teamwork is essential in this duty, so a mobile officer may escort the EMS to the location, so that the initial responding post 1 officer can remain with the aided. Once on site, the security officers and others need to leave the area and keep it clear of bystanders so that the EMS can conduct their assessment, which may include requests for private medical information from the aided in question. Departure of EMS and aided. EMS leaves with the student in a stretcher. In this instance, the EMS and student agree that it is best they be taken to a local hospital for further evaluation and assistance. Note that in some instances, the aided may RMA or refuse medical assistance and not be taken to the hospital after the initial assessment or sometimes even before the arrival or call for EMS. Confirming details. Post 1 officer gets the name and badge number of the crew chief. Confirms what hospital the student is being taken to, if any. The destination is relayed to base as well as notifying them when EMS is off-site with aided. Confirmation and documentation of information such as the EMS crew chief's badge number and what hospital the aided is being transported to is necessary information for relevant parties to know the location and disposition of the aided. Report Information gathered in memo book. All names, witnesses, events, and times are entered into the report and passed on to the relevant parties. Now that the incident has concluded, all of the information gathered will be input into a standard security incident report, noting the who, what, when, where, and if possible, why of the incident. There may be a request to debrief the events of the incident with a superior officer or supervisor at this point.
This concludes the presentation.